We learned previously that vector is a quantity which carries both magnitude and direction. Physical examples of vectors include velocity, acceleration, force, and momentum. These are quantities we are going to learn at later stage. But before we go to those topics, let us learn some basic vector algebras. Well, first, what you need to know in this lesson is that you can actually put down a vector quantity on paper. You draw a vector on paper, and you do so by drawing an arrow. The magnitude of a vector quantity is given by the length of the arrow. The larger the magnitude, the longer the arrow. The direction of the quantity is given by the direction where the arrow is pointing. We can also name the vector quantity. Let's say we want to call the vector f. f may stand for force, for instance. Conventionally, we do so in writing by either writing the name in bold, or to put up an arrow on top of the vector name. Sometimes, we are only interested in the magnitude of the vector, which we can refer to by writing the name of the vector unbold, or in between two vertical lines, like shown here. These two parallel vertical lines are also known as the absolute sign in mathematics. Now I understand these are still kind of abstract, but hang on for the moment. We are now going to place this vector quantity in a two-dimensional Cartesian coordinate system. In this coordinate, as you can see, vector f spans diagonally across a 2 by 2 unit square. Okay, I think I need to give a warning here. As from my past experience of teaching, you guys tend to place your attention on the wrong or not so important things and completely miss the big picture. Here in this example, it is not the 2 that you should worry about. For all we care, vector f can span over any area in the Cartesian space. I choose 2 simply as example. Going back, as I said earlier, vector f spans diagonally across a 2 by 2 unit square. Can you then compute the magnitude of f? Well, of course you can. It is given by the length of the arrow, and we can compute this length using Pythagoras theorem. The answer is 2 square root of 2. What about this direction? Well, the direction is given by the direction where the arrow is pointing. If we are to be exact in our description, we can compute the angle that the arrow makes with respect to the positive x-axis, and this angle is 45 degree. In conclusion, you can describe a factor by stating its length in reference to its magnitudes and the angle it makes with adjacent positive x-axis in reference to its direction. Do note that it is by convention that we use the angle that is adjacent to the positive x-axis to indicate the direction of the factor. But this is not the only way to describe a factor. We can also describe the factor through its component. It is obvious that the factor spans over two units along positive x-axis and two units along positive y-axis. So we write f is equal to 2i hat plus 2j hat. Now this is probably something new to you guys. What is this i hat and j hat? First, there are also factors. But there are the special type of factors, in the sense that the magnitude is fixed to be 1 and the direction is given as shown in the right image i is pointing along positive x-axis, and j is pointing along positive y-axis. They are thus called unit factors along positive x and y-axis respectively. The use of letter i and j come by convention, so please don't ask me why it is not a or b or c. The head instead of arrow on top of the letter indicates that it is a unit factor. Lastly, a factor can also be expressed using a column matrix such as this. It is by convention that the numbers on first row refers to the component of the factor along the x-axis, and the number on the second row refers to the component of the factor along the y-axis. If you understand everything I explained in the previous slide on two-dimensional Cartesian coordinate, it should be straightforward to extend the idea to three-dimensional Cartesian coordinate. Of course, in three-dimensional Cartesian coordinate, we need one more axis, which is the z-axis. We also need a unit factor pointing along positive z-axis, and by convention, this unit factor is called factor k with the head on top. So it is ijk for xyz, it is not that difficult to remember, isn't it? A factor in this coordinate such as this red factor, this factor points to some random direction, so I use dotted and dash line to guide you seeing its component along x, y, and z-axis. This red factor can mathematically be expressed as 3i plus 4j plus 5k, and using the column matrix as such. Alright, let's get back to our factor f. 
in many cases throughout this course you are faced with a situation where you do actually know the length or the magnitude of the factor as well as its direction but you are more interested with the component of the factor along particular direction take for instance this scenario where a boy is pulling a toy cart with a certain force given the mass of the cart and the famous f equal to ma you are interested to find the acceleration of the cart this is a simple problem except that the force is pointing diagonally up while you are interested in the acceleration along horizontal direction the standard operating procedure to solve this problem as we are going to learn later on is that you will need to find out the component of the force along horizontal direction how are you going to find the component of the force along horizontal direction well if i present you the force in this cartesian coordinate with nice dotted lines and so on of course you can easily get the answer but the world won't be so easy on you there won't be any dotted guidelines and this should not stop you from computing the component of f along x-axis for i have taught you how to do so in the previous lesson using trigonometry the component of f along the horizontal direction is nothing but the projection of factor f onto the x-axis and this is given by f cosine 45 degree indeed if you do your calculation correctly you will get 2 which is the expected answer can you now find out what is the component of f along the vertical direction very likely in this course that we deal with multiple factors for instance factor f and factor p in this case and we want to add these factors to give us a resultant factor say factor r now without realizing it you guys have actually been exposed to factor addition when we learn that factor f can be written as 2i plus 2j isn't that factor addition we are adding a factor 2i which is a factor with magnitude 2 pointing along positive x-axis to a factor 2j which is a factor with magnitude 2 pointing along positive y-axis in general adding multiple factor is as simple as adding their components here we have f equal to 2i plus 2j and p equal to 1i plus 2j so we add 2i from f with 1i from p and that give us 3i and 2j from f with 2j from p and that give us 4j so notice how we add all the x component and all the y components and assign the unit factors i and j respectively if these are factors in 3d then the same treatment goes for the z component having the unit factor k you can add all the numerical values of the x component and all the numerical values of the y component independently but you cannot i repeat you cannot add the numerical values of the x component to the y components that is in our example here you cannot add 3 to 4 to give you 7. the lesson learned here is that you can only add the components of the factors which is aligned in the same direction all x components are aligned in the horizontal direction so you can add them similarly all y components are aligned in the vertical direction so you can add them but you cannot add horizontal components to vertical components if you wish you can also write the addition in column matrix which is probably more obvious why the addition has to be done as such you can also imagine adding up the factor as tailgating one factor with another where the head of one factor is placed at the tail of the other factor like shown here as you can see the resultant factor will then be given by the arrow connecting the head and the tail of the n factors by the way in case you are wondering it doesn't matter which factor should tailgate which factor factor addition is commutative meaning that it is independent of the order of how they are being added there are many other operations involving factors applicable in physics dot product cross product just to name a few but for now we will just cover the bare minimum required for this course